Hi, I'm Ferd and welcome to my video. In uh, this one I'm working on a Tough Torque K57R transmission to come out of uh, Husqvarna. Um, I was just needing to change the oil and it had, had gotten low and, and, and uh, the filter was stopped up and it was sort of hesitating a little bit. And uh, when I pulled the pan off I kind of flipped it up, you know, on its uh, end, and knowing better than to do that, things just started falling all over the place, the little shims, the oil pump. And uh, when I went to put this back together, the pin was missing for the, that turned the rotor on that shaft. Now. I searched and searched for this thing and could not find it. That's why I'm rebuilding it. I took it apart to see if I could find it down inside the case. And it was important to find this thing. Because you don't want something like that loose in, inside of there, moving around. Um, after days of searching, I finally was looking at the pump and I uh, was kind of wondering if it may have fell down that little tiny hole in the top of it. And lo and behold it did. I, I took this thing out and ran some gas through it and, and uh, shook the hell out of it and finally this pen came back out of that that hole and uh, went flying down the driveway. I had to get on my hands and knees and search for it again but I did find it. Now I want to let you know that if I would have left that in there, within minutes of me running that tractor, I would have destroyed it and would have been looking at another uh, transmission for this thing. There's a lot of good information in here. I've added uh, some info about that swash plate, how you can identify which way you want to flip it, depending on what tractor it may have came out of. I hope you find that information or there might be something else in there that helps you put yours back together properly. Have fun. The only thing that was really wrong with it was the on filter was clogged up causing it to hesitate and the reason why I tore it completely apart was because the little pin on the oil pump fell down inside of it and I couldn't get it out so I had to tear this thing apart so I thought I would just put it back together for you um, I do use assembly lube it says engines on it but it's good for just about anything and the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna work down in here I didn't take the shaft out of it so I'm gonna put the these little skid pads back down in there. I'm not going to put any oil underneath them. And then the next thing is uh, this this cradle. I can't get that washer up, but I've used my lube on it. I've got um, the bearings lubed up just a little bit with it. And grease this up a little bit. But this thing can be a little difficult to get in and out because of this spring right here and uh, all you have to do is just put a little pressure on it like that and it'll it'll fall right down in there and you noticed I didn't have to take any of that out it's just that when you go to lift this thing out of there just make sure you just push that spring over and it'll it'll come right out of there next thing I'm going to put the, the pump down in there on top of it. Okay, with these pumps, I'm sure you've seen them before. This is like the base of it. And then inside of that, there's a spring. And then there's these little pistons that... Uh, they go down there like that. Now, up inside of the piston, 
up in there you got these little caps or little plugs that go up in there and uh, the spring actually right you know pushes against that and if you can see that there's some significant wear in these little caps so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna I'm gonna flip them over to their uh, their good side there and get a little bit of lube on that I'm gonna drop that down there and then I've got my piston assembly inside this paper towel it's gonna hold all them pins for me and I'm just gonna poke it wiggle it down on there and then we'll just uh, pull the paper towel out from under it I uh, got some oil in there get that lubed up real good Okay, the pump's got to go in the, the main part of it is one unit. And something I was wanting to show you with this one is uh, you've got these little valves. Got a little tiny hole on the side of it. They're both the same as, as far as the side they, the size they go into the side of the pump right here they got a little spring but uh, here's the other one if you look up inside of it this one, there's a little tiny filter that goes up in there so if you're you're uh, disassembling in this thing and cleaning it out just beware that that thing is up there and uh, you don't want to lose it it's kind of tricky there's another little pin and you've got two of them so um, be careful you don't get these things mixed up you've got the pin that goes in the pump and then you've got another pin that's gonna go um, in to this uh, drive piston that's uh, that, that sets out this away on the transmission and that pokes out down here in the bottom and it moves in and out by the, your neutral that you can see right down here um, the best way to position this would be to have that facing would be the front side of the the case here. I want to take some of my assembly lube and I want to fill that hole up. I don't want that thing to fall out. And a little bit more back here on the back side of that way I know it's not going to fall out when I put this thing down in there. You got a little uh, washer that goes on there like that. Um, it's going to go down like this. Bearings for your piston on this side, just like on the other. This thing, you can see, is in an angle. It's going to go. It's going to go down in assembly like that. There's a washer on the parts thing. You got a special note on there. It says uh, most commonly lost and forgotten part but it goes right here on top of this thing like that and then uh, the shaft comes up through it like this The 
that washer on the back of it like that. And then here, your main drive gear just goes over the back side like that. And then this is all going to plug in to the main pump. Like so. Okay, on this side you got two guide pins on the pump. They're going to go here. You've got your uh, neutral. goes to your neutral lever. Uh, might have to wiggle that a little bit. And uh, pretty much it. It's all should just set right down on there. And try not to scratch the surface the other side with that shaft going down in there. Now, this is going to be the tricky part. You're going to have to push this in a little bit. Right here, you're at a critical point of the assembly where you see my left hand, right where my thumb is, is what they call a swash plate. This can be put either the way you see it or flipped over depending on what tractor this thing may have come out of. To help you out if you didn't take pictures of this before you took it apart the first picture I'm showing you is uh, the transmission with the accelerator lev lever and uh, it's marked where it's facing forward. When you push the accelerator on the tractor the rod is going to push that lever back towards the rear of the transmission. If your tractor is like that, then this is the way that you need to put your swash plate in. If your uh, rod happens to pull the accelerator forward, like the one in this video that I'm doing, then you need to place the swash plate with the small side facing towards you when you assemble it. Just a little quick tip, if you put this in backwards, when you hit the pedal, you're going to go backwards if you're trying to go forward and vice versa. a bracket. Let's get the magnets. Go in there and catch the dirt. We'll go ahead and put that on there. Reduction gear. Just kind of slides in like that. You got a washer on each side of it. You got the spacer in the middle, and then the flat side of this shaft. You can see it's going to go in this way right here and you need it facing up because the pan has the flat spot that that fits in so there we go I had it right we're down to the pump and the filter got the little tiny pin goes in here This is going to be opposite of where the oil goes into the pump, so make sure this is over here on this side of it. No pins or anything. It's got this 
the spring that goes there, the filter, and we're ready to put the pan on it. Okay, that's pretty much it. The rest of it's just filling it up with oil. I got a few diagrams downloaded from the website that show you where to fill it and how much to fill it along with an exploded x-ray vision view looking from the front at it and I, I show that round little round circle in the middle that's actually a magnet inside of it and that there will kind of help you as far as how high to fill your oil in it. Also it'll take a little over two quarts of oil so you'll probably want to get three and when you're bleeding the air out of it if you can get a drill and a socket to fit the nut on that fan right there spin it clockwise you don't have to go real fast with it and you'll see the air bubbles kind of come up out of it usually isn't that much but that'll help you get it to the level that you need now Tough Torque has their own oil that they want you to use in it this is the part number for this specific transmission that I put together and it's basically a full synthetic 5W50 motor oil if you can't get a hold of that any decent full synthetic oils gonna work in this transmission now me I don't live in the North Pole so I didn't need them numbers down near the 5W and I just I'm all, I've always been successful with using a regular SAE oil uh, some of them I've actually used 10W30 this particular one because of the upper end number of it in the extreme summertime I use a bag on the back I went with uh, 2050 if you use your your lawnmower or whatever for shoveling snow in the winter time then I would recommend going with that 5W synthetic motor oil but that's about it thanks for watching like and subscribe watch another video if you get a chance leave a comment below if you got any questions I can answer for you